just got the soap dispenser installed here and also the faucet. I don't have the water connection set up yet, but faucet's uh, fully in place and screwed down and everything. And it's a good time to do it before you put the cook top in because you can kind of reach under here if you need to. But now I'm ready to work on the cooktop. So this is the cooktop I'm going to use. And I'll put an Amazon link for this. I really like this one. It's um, kind of the highest quality looking one. Some of the RV ones are real cheap looking. It has nice uh, cast iron grates on it. First thing we need to do, you can see the gas connection here. It's a half inch. And what we're gonna use for that, this is gonna be for the water heater. Set that aside. And this is gonna be for this here. So this comes with all of this. We are going to need one adapter for this. This guy right here, half inch flare to half inch FIP. And it's a uh, female coupling. So this will get screwed on here with some thread sealant. I like to use uh, this stuff here. Some people call it pipe dope, pipe thread sealant. You just brush it on the threads here. And uh, this one, you do not add any pipe sealant. This is a uh, flare fitting, so that's going to get connected directly to this side here. So we'll get connected here. And then for the valve under the sink there, we're going to unscrew this adapter here and that'll get screwed right into our valve down there. And this is a 48 inch hose, so I'm hoping this is going to reach. Okay, that's added there and screwed in with the thread sealant. You can see it squeezing out there. And I checked in the 48 inch hose does make it over here to the cooktop. Next we'll add this guy. So this stuff's a lot better than just using the tape. If you do use the tape, you'll need to use the yellow tape for gas. Don't use the white tape, which is for water. Be careful not to over tighten this so we don't bend this thing. Just keep an eye on it. Okay. So now this will go on here and this doesn't get any thread sealant because that's the flare fitting. The uh, seal will be on the flare there. One of the nice things about this cooktop is it doesn't require any power connection. It comes with this battery and that's gonna be the igniter clicking sound. So this will go in here. And then it also comes with this uh, foam sealant. This will just go not up and down, but sideways, except that's the taller sides. I almost forgot to install the pressure regu regulator. So. so this will go right here onto that. And then I'll need a either a half inch nipple coming out or I can get a male adapter to come out of here, which is probably what I'll do. All right, so I got really lucky. I actually had one of these. This is what I had before the female. So now I can use the male here. I'll put some thread sealing on this. All right, that should be good like that. If I want, I guess I can actually um, go ahead and put this on now too, just so there will be uh, one less connection under the cabinet there. And then once I get under the cabinet, these are the clips that mount the uh, cooktop down. So once I'm under the cabinet, each one of these arrows here has a little hole for the, the screws to go through. So this clip will go like this basically, screwed in there and that's what's going to hold it down. There'll be four of them. So it'll be a little too hard to show you that on camera under the cabinet, so I'll just show you that now. As you can see, everything's working great. Highly recommend this uh, cooktop and uh, I'll put a link in the description below for it. Now that I have all the gas stuff out, I'm also gonna do the valve here for the 
water heater. So this is a half inch to a three eighths. And uh, this all comes in the kit here. I'll link this and uh, I'm gonna put some pipe sealing on this, tighten it down and uh, we'll tighten this down as well. I got this RV fill on Amazon, but I don't think it's gonna really work for me. All right, here's the tank. 28 gallon tank. This is going to be the intake to the water pump. That'll be on the side uh, closest to the cabinet there. And on this side, I've got another PEX connection here. I've got all the pipe sealing on there for uh, a drain here. This will be the air vent. I'm not going to use these two. And this will be where I have the fill. So I just need to take a razor blade knife here, cut around this. And when I get about halfway done, what you want to do is put a screw into this. So you have something to hold on to, like a two and a half inch screw. So that piece of plastic doesn't fall into the tank and you can't get it out. Then I'll have uh, this screwed in. It's like a 45 degree elbow. It's not a 90 degree, it's a 45 and it'll come out. Then I'll have another 45 over here coming out to the back of the van where I'll fill it right here. Alright, as you can see, we've got a pretty tight fit here. I just drilled a test hole for the pipe to come through. Then it's going to make a turn and come into the tank right here. You can see I had to uh, pull the drawers out and uh, I'm just making sure right now that it fits behind this drawer when the drawers are all, all the way in and it does. So that should be good to go. And then I'll drill uh, one more hole going into the sink base cabinet. And then that's where I'll put the water pump. So here we are under the sink cabinet and I've got the water pump mounted here. Just takes uh, four screws and it's got a negative and a positive line, which I'll connect over here to the switch. And I'm gonna have the PEX pipe come in here, come out here, and then I'll have two on off valves to connect that. But now I can run the PEX line through and I'm gonna kinda of get everything in place before I fasten everything down. Before I forget, I need to drill one more hole for a pipe coming back out this way to go back to the tankless water heater. So this one, I think I'm gonna do higher. That way it'll be above the level of the tank so I could kinda of move it wherever it needs to go back here. So this will be the output coming to the back and then I'll just leave a little extra length here so that I can tee this off later. And this will go to the tankless water heater and then also the outdoor hose. And then you can see there the little 90 degree, make a right turn down to the bottom of the tank. laying everything out right now so I could fit everything. This is just kind of temporarily screwed in because I'm going to put a piece of plywood paneling behind it. And I've got this vent that's going to go kind of like that. And I'm just trying to work out where I'm going to put the fill coming off of the water tank there. And then where I'm going to put the hose. So I'm just trying to work out those two things before I cut the piece of plywood because I'll need to cut it custom for those two things. So this will come kind of like this and it's got a little bit of a downward pitch. So it'll drain in. And then um, this will get put on here like that. So we're gonna cut flush here and there'll be a piece of plywood. So here's the shape of the plywood I'm going to cut. 
for right here. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and then I'll scribe in that edge there. All right, that shape's looking good for me. Now I'll just uh, cut those two holes, one for the fill and one for the hose. All right, I just cut everything, put everything in place here where it's gonna go. So now I can take this off and paint it and then I'll put it back up. The fill is all connected. Let's see here, got the two 45s come through here. And because of this coupling here, which is bigger than the hole, it's held in place. You can just unscrew this, put a hose right in here, fill it up, and it is angled down. So the hose connection here. So what I have here, this is gonna be the drain. It's gonna come out right angle here, go through this shutoff switch, and then straight down through the van so it could drain out. So I need to drill one hole, this drill bit here, straight through right here, and there's space under the van for that. And then a second hole, this is the air vent. It's gonna come out right angle and straight down right next to that other hole. So this is what I've got under the sink. This is coming in the intake into the pump from the tank. It's gonna come out, come up here, and then I'm gonna secure it to the wall over there. This is going to the back of the van for the water heater, the tankless water heater shower and the hose. And then I need to splice into this and make two connections for the kitchen faucet here. Now, even though I'm not using hot water on this sink, I still wanna make two connections. So I'm still gonna make two connections here for the hot and cold line. Even though it's, I'm only using cold, if you just connect just one of them when you use your faucet, it's not gonna feel right. It'll only put out water when it's on the cold side and then you go to the hot side and then nothing comes out. Even though it won't have hot water, it'll feel like a normal faucet um, no matter where you move the handle. Everything's connected and even made the electrical connection on the water pump. So the only thing left to do is fill the tank and see if we got any leaks. When you do a system like this with this many connections, it's almost unheard of to not have one or two leaks. So let's see if we can do it without a leak here. Check everything twice, so hopefully we're good to go. And I am gonna get like a on-off switch for the hose, but I didn't buy that yet, so. Doing it like this right now. And I think what I'll do first is just put a little bit of water in there and make sure the tank's not leaking anywhere. First, I'll do that first, so. Just get above the line of the connection here. Let me stop it there and check. The Alright, I didn't see any leaks in the front there on that tank connection, so I'm going to go ahead and fill it up about halfway. Actually, the other thing I want to do, I'm going to stop it there and I'm going to turn the drain on here. And I want to drain the tank a few times before I run the pump because the tank sometimes has a little bit of plastic in it when they fabricate it. You don't want that getting caught up in the pump, so. What do is drain it out the bottom a few times. Okay, I'm confident I've drained it enough now that it's clean in there. And if there's any other little bits left over, the strainer should get it before it hits the water pump. So I'm gonna fill it a final time now, and then we'll put the fuse in. Then we can flip the switch and check for this. Okay, 
so when I fl flip this switch, the water pump should turn on and all the lines should get pressurized. And that's when I'm gonna check for leaks. You can hear it clicking on. There's only one connection I was worried about. It's this one right here. I didn't push it in all the way, but see any leaks yet. Let me go around the back and check. And everything's fully pressurized because the pump just turned off. And I don't see any leaks. This could be quite amazing. <laughs> I get it on the first shot. It never happens with this many connections. I haven't hooked up the drain yet, but I'll just put this bucket under the sink here. And uh, we'll turn these two valves on. Pressurize the faucet. And this was the connection for the, this is going to the switch for the water pump. One positive, one negative. And then I'll uh, secure these wires down later and uh, shrink wrap the connection here. And there'll probably be some air in the line when I first turn this on. We have water. I don't see one leak anywhere. <laughs> Pretty good. Not bad. Not a single leak. About to install the gray water tank under, under the van. Kind of show you what I got here. I've got the electronic valve that's just coming. It's going to drain out the bottom right here with this elbow air vent here. This is where the water will go in and then this is just a plug and I built this frame under it and uh, now I can just screw this in. I'll use uh, these screws just to pre-drill. Then I'll use these galvanized metal screws to hold it. And uh, it'll go right through these holes on the frame of the van here, and then on the bottom of the frame here. And I have a whole video on uh, the install of the gray water tank, so I'm not gonna make a new one, but I'll put a link below for um, how I did this setup. All right, this thing is fully installed. I just have to make the electrical connection, but everything's in. And I'll put some uh, marine sealant around this. Make that nice and watertight. But it's really sturdy. Can't move it at all. It's wedged up here. There's a lot of tension on this because I, um, I use the clamps to push it up. And I pulled it out and screwed it in. And uh, I'm trying to show you the other side here. I put the uh, air vent on the back side. I'll mostly just keep this valve open unless I'm somewhere where water can't be drained out, like a campsite or something, or uh, stealth camping. All right, so the gray water tank is fully installed now and I've got the switch all set up. It's in the closed position. And you can see no water coming out. And when we switch it to the open position to drain it, electronic switch starts draining the tank. Okay, so this is the hose and I'll put a link for this hose. I love this link. Use it on every van. Just a real quick uh, 
connection here. And again, there'll probably be some air in the line again. Once the air is out, thing works great. Really good pressure, wow. Now you can wash the fan with your own fan. And to remove it, it's just a quarter turn. Okay, just one last thing to test. The outdoor heated shower. And um, I do have a vent cap that's gonna go like this. But we can test it without that for now. So we'll turn the gas on. And then when I turn this water valve here on. We should have hot water when I uh, flip this. Except, I'm make sure I put the battery in. I need two batteries under here and it, it didn't come with it, so I'm gonna go grab those real quick. Okay, I got the batteries. It takes these really huge D4 batteries, two of them. Now that the batteries are in, the gas is on, when I start running the water, you should hear a clicking sound and it should ignite the water. There it goes. So cold and it's hot. Already hot, it's really hot. Stop it. And then um, I also have the bracket mounted here. And if I get a second bracket, I mount it right here. If you want to make it hotter, I guess you just add a little more gas. Uh, that's nice. I usually like to unscrew this to drain it when I'm done using it so it doesn't start dripping in the bag. Be surprised how much water is in these things. The only other thing I'll do is take some marine sealant and seal the pipes on the top here like I did with the propane lines here and also under the van. Other than that I'd say we're done so thanks for watching and maybe next episode we'll uh, take a little camping trip so stay tuned.